Okay, this is going to be the fourth and definitely final part because we don't really have much to talk about here. If you already feel confident that you definitely want to use the uh, SWF version of this, uh, go for it. I'm just going to be talking about uh, exporting this out to an FLV file. Uh, the only couple things I've done since uh, you saw this last was I did put in a little tiny spaceship. And let me just publish out the file real fast to show you that. And there's really nothing you missed out <laughs> teaching wise it's just this little gray stretched out circle with a tiny bevel on it and it comes across here and you'll see it twinkle in just a second uh that snow that i taught in uh the beginning of part three i did go ahead and uh, put that in here just in the top left i shrunk it down a little bit and i'm not seeing any uh, major playback issues now so it could be the size of it um that uh just you know it's uh it seems to be chugging away at it just fine, as far as fine as it was uh, without it. So that's a great sign, and I think actually by the end of this whole thing, you'll kind of see how pointless it is to, to even consider exporting out an FLV file um, because the playback, I think, is a lot is really similar. Uh, and with this, you don't ever have to worry about it um, creating some sort of perfect uh, loop. Whereas with the FLV file, um, you know, you are exporting out a, a specific amount of time. And remember these uh, elements in here, some of them are random. So you're probably never, you know, if you set it up like that, you're probably never going to get a perfect uh, uh, loop. But, you know, if you do just want to hang out and uh, listen to me talk for a little bit longer, go for it. Here we go. Export movie. And let's, here we go. Okay, so um, we'll just uh, let's go to part three. No, nope, I'm sorry, part four. Uh, you can call this uh, whatever you want. Animate stills finished, and you do want it to be QuickTime. Remember, QuickTime is the one that actually records the um, the action script and the uh, animation inside of movie cl clips. So you can't go and export out a PNG. If you did, you would just get this one frame from the main timeline. So we got to go with QuickTime. Uh, you can click on save, and. Uh, Here's where you gotta choose uh, how long this you want this to be. I think before I had like one, I did like one fifty nine, which would have been just right under two minutes. And uh, you know, if we're gonna, if I'm gonna do this one more time, I'll just go for thirty seconds. Uh, this ended up creating like almost a gigabyte file when I exported it out um, for two minutes worth of it. So uh, yeah, it can get kind of hefty. But um, you uh, don't want to miss this right here. Your QuickTime settings. And uh, this is where you could, if you want to kick up the frame rate, you could go over here to um, these settings and uh, bump this up if you want to speed things up. Uh, you would also want to pay attention to the, um, the compressor here too. If you want the best possible, you're probably going to want to go with animation and not this uh, H.264, which is uh, what I use for screen cap in these tutorials, which gives you a nice file size, but it also mutes out a lot of the colors, if you guys have noticed um, in testing. Uh, the SWFs that have been given you, um, the, qual the the color on them is way better than um, what I capture here in the movies. And then also, too, you probably want to bump this up to uh, best. So uh, just keep that in mind. I'm actually going to cancel this out since I've already exported this a ton of times. I'll just use one of my previous ones. And what you want to do is open up, uh, after you get the exported one, a uh, recent version of uh, the CS3 uh, video, or I'm sorry, the um, Flash video encoder. Uh, if you're using a more recent version of Flash, um, you might it might be called the Adobe Media um, uh, CS5 video encoder or whatever. Um, CS5 isn't actually out yet, but I do for some reason on my computer have the CS5 uh, media encoder. I, I don't know how that showed up there. So anyway, um, you can actually, we'll, we'll just take a look at the settings that, that I used uh, last time here. And um, go over here to settings. Oh, no. Oh, all right. Well, let's go ahead and um, let's just look at any settings. Maybe well, that's probably gone too. Okay, let me pause and bring in a movie file to, to look at. Okay, so I dug out of the trash this monster-sized MOV file, and uh, let's uh, dump it on in here, 
and it should uh, show you waiting because it's uh, waiting for you to basically just hit start queue. But let's look at the settings real quick. Uh, I believe what I did before to make this uh, try to look at, uh, better than just a medium quality. I set this up to high, uh, 700 kilobytes per second, um, frame rate same as source, crop uh, didn't do anything over there, and uh, that was uh, that was about good to go. So I just hit OK, start queue, and it took about um, uh, five minutes for it to. Uh, give me uh, what I eventually ended up calling it, which is right here. Uh, if you want to take a look at the one of the more modern um, video encoders, this is um, this is the more recent one, the CS5 media encoder. Same deal. You can just drop the uh, movie file into uh, the little bucket there, and this is such an odd thing to include. <laughs> It's like a little countdown. If you don't hit start queue in time, well, anyway, let's uh, let's see if we can race against the clock. Go over here to settings, and it, 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 I guess it's still not taken down. So uh, they give you a lot more options in this uh, this later version. Probably the uh, one to start with is deciding whether or not you, you're going to export out an FLV file or this um, F4V file. And uh, I I played around with this one. It um, it actually ended up crashing on me if I did this FLV one. I think that's because the video was um, the because the size it was. And you'll notice too that um, as soon as you click on this FLV, it, it gives you an output of 720 by 480. Remember, this is 1200. Um, in fact, that's the correct size. So it's almost like it kind of knew that um, when I went over here and set the size of it back to what it um, should have been that it was going to crash. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But uh, okay, well, um, otherwise these are pretty much about the same uh, frame rate. Uh, let's see, bit rate level, high. Um, remember too, that was we set it high in the other one as well. And audio, we don't have audio, of course. Um, so again, it's a, uh, my feeling with all these uh, encoders is I just I usually tend to just go with whatever they um, the defaults are, and if I don't like how the um, the finished FLV looked, then I'll re-render it at a um, higher quality. So uh, let's close this out. And again, if you hit Start Queue, a few minutes you'll end up with an FLV file. Uh, one of the things you can do to actually see that uh, file without um, embedding it into a flash document is if you have the Adobe Media Player, um, you can uh, just basically drop the file onto that icon and, and play it through there. Uh, since we're all flash developers here though, we can of course uh, play it back inside of uh, flash. So let's go and open up this um, File I saved out as load FLV. In fact, let me just move this out of the way for right now. We'll pretend that this is a document that I haven't edited yet or set up correctly yet. So uh, what you'd want to do is make sure that uh, the file that you're loading the FLV file into is going to be in the same directory. Or I just suggest that basically. And uh, then uh, I've got the um, stage sized up for the uh, exact same size as uh, the movie. I'm going to go over here to components and I will drag out this FLV playback. If I can close this guy up. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set it up to being the correct size, but it should um, also, uh, when you kind of associate it with that FLV file, it should grab the metadata, and one of those is uh, the actual size of it and should set that by default. So uh, now that that's in there, I'm going to go over here to the component inspector. It's uh, this little button, or you can just go over here to component inspector. And uh, since we're probably going to want to be showing this uh, back, this basically is animated matte painting as a background element with other stuff in front of it, you probably don't want to put a skin over top of it. So you can just go over here and turn off the skin. So go to none. And that'll uh, just play it, it, should play it automatically. Actually, autoplay is set to true, so it will play it automatically. Uh, if you did want to leave a skin on here, um, you can choose any one of these available ones. Uh, just know that when you, when you publish out the file or test the movie, it's going to create this um, SWF inside of the folder with all of your other stuff, and that's going to be one of the things that you do need to upload as well. But Let's uh, click none for that, click OK, and you know what, let me just delete that off. We'll go bring back the one I was using but, uh, before. And uh, this one has uh, an instance name on it. I called it my FLV. So on your end, just go ahead and type in there, my 
FLV. And uh, the reason we're going to give this an instance name is so that we can communicate to it through ActionScript. And if you open up the Actions panel, uh, you can hit F9 to do that. Here are the only few lines of code you need to have uh, this um, uh, this movie file loop. Okay, so just go import fl dot video dot asterisk semicolon, and that just gives you some extra functionality uh, to work with uh, video. And uh, here is the uh, instance name that we just gave the component. Okay, and all we're doing here is uh, adding an event listener so we can listen out for the completion of the playback of this uh, movie. When it does that, it's going to call this function. Here is the function name. Here is that same name right here, and uh, the event. Uh, again, this kind of this these two match up. All right, if you took our last lesson, <laughs> match, match. All right. Get it, and then uh, the event that uh, or the target event here is is referring back to is my FLV. So this could also be replaced with that. All right, so event target, and then we're just playing it back over again, and that loops it. Now of course it doesn't make it a perfect loop if the movie file isn't uh, a perfect loop. And again, we talked about this before that uh, most likely if you export out that. Uh, Swift with all the random stuff in it, it's never going to be a perfect loop. But uh, anyway, this is how it uh, looks and plays back. If we were to compare it to uh, this one right here, well, one of the things you'd notice is that the color is a lot uh, darker in this one or deeper. So it looks a lot better um, on that level. And I think the playback is about the same. Uh, granted, this one's in the background, so maybe it's not playing back as fast. But, you know, I, I, I think this one is doing quite well considering all the stuff that is going on inside of here so again I, don't, I wouldn't recommend the uh, going with the FLV on that one so I'm gonna definitely trash out this file right here because that is way too big oh and if you were to do this with uh, action script 2 let me um, give you guys the code for that real fast it would be AS2 code. I'm just going to comment it out. So it's it's um you know it's pretty similar. Uh, myflv dot complete equals this function right here, and uh, you're not returning anything from that function, so it's void. And it's just saying, hey, this. All right, referring back to this guy right here. Play on. So that's how that's done and of course don't forget to um, if you're going to use this FLV method go ahead and upload that you want to upload this as well but for the rest of you I say you just publish out from here so you can always go over here to publish and um, that will well, let's just go ahead and see what it generates it will give you the magical HTML file of course it gives you the SWF file and uh, you should be set to uh, upload those guys and be good to go which I think brings us to the very tail end of uh, this tutorial I hope you guys enjoyed it um, I feel like we've gone over a lot of um, pretty good atmospheric effects so that's it for me um, thanks for listening